So today let's try to measure the speed of some motors using a very simple strobe light. And let's also explain the basics of induction motors. I have one more such motor which I already disassembled. And here you can see the rotor in it. It's an asynchronous motor. So it's using a squirrel cage rotor, which looks like this. And the windings. It's a single phase motor with a run capacitor for it, and it seems to have four poles. There are two windings, and each of them has one, two, three, four poles. The other one as well, one, two, three, four, which are offset. One winding has the pairs of poles in this direction and this direction, and the other winding has them in this direction and this direction. And because it has four poles, or two pairs of poles, the main frequency is divided by two. 50 Hz divided by two pairs of poles is 25 revolutions per second, or 1500 RPM. This is how fast the magnetic field is turning in it. And if the motor was synchronous, the rotor would be turning at the same speed. But because it's asynchronous, the rotor is turning a little bit slower, because of the slip. The rotor is basically an iron core with a short turn, or a lot of short turns made of aluminium in it. It's not superconductive, so the magnetic field has to be slowly slipping in it, moving in reference to the rotor, to generate its own magnetic field in it, by basically inducing a current in the short turns. So the rotor in an asynchronous motor is turning a little bit slower than the magnetic field. So in this one it should be a little bit less than 25 revolutions per second, or a little bit less than 1500 revolutions per minute. Let's try to measure it. I painted this black except this notch, and let's use a simple strobe light, just a 9 volt LED and a voltage doubler connected to a function generator. And let's measure using the strobe light. This is 5 notches, going down with the frequency. This is 4 notches. 3 notches, 2 notches, and finally there should be just one. And there it is. At about 24 Hz. Times 60 is 1440 RPM. It's really using just a super super simple circuit. And for a more accurate measurement, I'm connecting a digital frequency meter to it, just for case via a resistor. And when I get the notch stationary, my frequency meter is showing 24.22 Hz. This motor basically has two sets of coils. One is connected via a capacitor, shifting the current in it 90 degrees ahead. And now let's do some artificial intelligence 3D computer simulation of what's happening in it. Here you can see the two sets of coils and the magnetic field in it. Let's start with the positive peak current in the violet coils and the magnetic field is like this. And the AC voltage progresses and gets to the peak positive current in the green coils and zero crossing in the violet. And the magnetic field turns like this to the green coils with the peak current in them. Then the current again progresses to the negative peak in the violet coils, and it turns again to the violet coils like this. And then it progresses to the negative peak in the green coils, and turns like this to them. And then again a positive peak in the violet ones, and the minus voltage basically made one full cycle, 20 milliseconds, and it aligns again like this. And because there are two pairs of poles in each set of coils, during one main cycle, the magnetic field makes just half a revolution. If it was a synchronous motor, the rotor would do half a revolution as well. But because it's asynchronous, because of the slip, it makes slightly less than half a revolution. And also note that, for example, if these two coils are turning clockwise from the perspective of the rotor, then these two are turning counterclockwise. And if these are clockwise, these are counterclockwise. And this is why it always produces two south poles and two north poles. Now let's try another motor. You can see two marks or notches. Let's go down with the frequency until I can see just one. 
Oh, it's almost stationary and it reads 48.7 Hz times 60 minus 2922 RPM. And the reason I'm looking for the synchronization from above, not from below, I basically start at a higher frequency, is because if you start from a lower frequency, you can actually find another synchronization at a lower frequency, for example like this, where the LED blinks every two revolutions. And this shows a false synchronization. Only every other rotation is illuminated, making the speed seem like half of what it actually is. Or one third. Or one quarter and so on. So always start looking for the synchronization from above. And when the motor is loaded using fan blades, for example, I know it's much harder to see, but it actually synchronizes at about 43 Hz, 44. When an asynchronous motor is loaded, it runs slower, of course. This motor has just two poles. One goes from the coil to the rotor from this side and the other pole from this side is just one pair. So if the motor was synchronous, it would run at 50 revolutions per second or 3000 per minute. But because it's asynchronous, because of the slip it runs slightly slower than this when it's not loaded and it slows down even more when it's loaded. And this motor has just two poles, one pair of poles, so it's turning faster. It's basically just one north and one south. And to create a phase shift in of a capacitor, there are these short turns on it. Let's say in one half cycle, the north pole comes from this side of the coil and it goes into the rotor from here. Then with a delay, it goes through the short turn and comes from this side. Then the polarity of the current in the coil flips and in the other half cycle the north comes from here and then again with a 90 degree delay it comes from here through the short turn. And then again the polarity of the current flips and it continues here and makes a revolution. The magnetic field makes one full revolution per main cycle and because of the slip the rotor makes slightly less than one revolution during this. It would make a full revolution if it was a synchronous motor, but this one is asynchronous, so it makes slightly less than a full revolution per cycle. And an induction motor with these short turns, making the magnetic field 90 degree behind, is called a shaded pole motor. And of course in a three phase motor the magnetic field is rotating on its own because it has three phases. But in a single phase motor, without any phase shifting mechanism, the magnetic field would be just pulsing, not rotating and the motor wouldn't turn. So it has to have some phase shifting mechanism, for example these short turns, or some capacitor for example. And these short turns induce a current, which creates its own magnetic field working against the changes of the magnetic field, so it's delayed. And they are not super conductive, so they just delay it instead of completely blocking it. And a very simple circuit connected to a square wave from a function generator. And the LED is connected via a capacitor because the pulse has to be very short. Connecting it via a resistor doesn't really work. With a capacitor it makes a very short pulse on every rising edge. This produces short enough and bright enough blinks. So that's it and if you like my videos please consider supporting this channel on a Patreon using the thanks button and the subscribing. And a big thanks to all of you who already support me. This channel couldn't exist without you.